Christmas candy is just one of my favorite items. And working with sugar, I really think is so fun. It scares so many people because yes, you can burn yourself or you can burn the sugar, but if you follow the instructions and a few simple tips, it really is not that hard. Last year, so many of you enjoyed the peanut brittle recipe. And as you saw, it wasn't too bad. That's why this year I'm just doing a slight variation on it and doing an old time candy that's called Pico candy. You know, I don't know why it's called Pico, but possibly because it incorporates peanuts and coconut, Pico. I don't know, it's an idea and if that's what it is, great. If not, whatever, it's called Pico candy and it is delicious. I like to have everything ready to go before I start cooking because once sugar's ready, it really does not wait. So you wanna have everything ready to go and ready to dump in. So I always have my butter and peanuts ready to go on the stove with me where I need them. And then I have my vanilla, baking soda, and coconut ready to go right when I take my kettle off the heat. Along with all my ingredients, I like to make sure my pan's ready to go too. You just wanna butter it with real butter and butter it really well because that's what's gonna help it come out later on. Everything is ready when I need it and exactly where I need it. That way there is no waiting and nothing will go wrong. This is a lot the same as the peanut brittle. You just wanna put some sugar, a little bit of water, and some corn syrup right into a heavy bottomed kettle. You wanna make sure to use a large kettle and one with a heavy bottom, not a really cheap thin one because a thin one, it could burn the sugar really quickly. A heavy one is gonna insulate it and heat evenly. And a large one is gonna make sure nothing bubbles over later on when we add the soda. Put that on the stove and mix it together until the sugar is dissolved. Once it comes to a boil, it's gonna take a little bit. Really, sugar takes longer than you think to come up to the temperature you need. And I am cooking this to 250 degrees. It is really important to have a good thermometer. If you have a candy thermometer that sticks in the kettle, make sure to use that, but just use what you are comfortable with. I have a good instant read thermometer that I love and just make sure that you have a good thermometer. Very important because a few degrees makes a big difference in working with sugar. Once it starts boiling, stir it occasionally just to make sure there's nothing sticking to the bottom. You can start checking your temperature every so often. Once I'm at 250 degrees, I add in the real butter. You wanna make sure to use real butter here and my peanuts. And you wanna make sure to use raw peanuts like the recipe says. That makes a huge difference because the hot sugar actually cooks the peanuts so you do not want roasted ones or salted ones or anything. Raw peanuts. Once you dump those in, you do wanna start stirring it fairly rarely because the peanuts can scorch on the bottom of the pan. So keep stirring it and checking the temperature. This one I don't cook to quite as hard as I do the peanut brittle. I only cook it to about 295 to 300. Once it is at that, make sure to take it off the heat instantly, then add in a little bit of real vanilla, some baking soda, and yes, it is gonna bubble. When the vanilla and soda are mostly stirred in, you just wanna add your unsweetened coconut flakes. You wanna make sure to get the flaked coconut, which is larger pieces and unsweetened. Stir that in and then very quickly dump it right into your buttered pan. And do not spread it out. I don't like spreading it out because that just makes it really flat and hard and you don't get those good bubbles inside of it. Leaving the bubbles and not touching the candy and letting it flatten out on its own will leave it tender and when you bite into it, it will not be tooth breaking. That's the same tip I gave in the peanut brittle and it holds true for this candy too. Scrape out the pan well and then leave it alone. The sheet you pour the candy into is gonna be really hot because this sugar is really hot. So just leave it alone, let it cool, and then let it cool completely. You wanna make sure it is cool to the touch. And if you have a cool like breezeway or garage, that's where I put mine because in the Midwest it is so cold that if you put things into your unheated areas, it's gonna cool extremely quickly. Once it is cool, you can just break it apart. I like to just kind of wrap the pan against the counter or just kind of take my hand and start breaking pieces apart on the candy. You can just break them into whatever size you want. Then it is ready to go. The coconut slightly flavors this, it adds some great texture, and honestly, this is such a good take on a traditional peanut brittle. I can't wait for you guys to try this, and it is so delicious. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, make sure to click like below and click subscribe to become part of the Great Boxwood family and see all of our videos. 
I love to share all of my holiday baking and decorating secrets with you. And I hope you do the same. Make sure to leave a comment. Thanks so much and Merry Christmas.